Music has its own borders. What do I mean by this? So this video has to do with the concept of musical provinces, which is something that we've talked about before. Musical provinces being basically, to put it simply, this phenomenon in which, you know, French and English music have an affinity with one another that they naturally don't have with Korean or Japanese music. And clearly Korean and Japanese music are more part of a category in musical province with one another. That's what I mean by musical provinces. Now, a mistake that a lot of people often make is to expect musical provinces to match up with other categorizations, to line up perfectly with other categorizations. For example, uh, a lot of times I see that everywhere on YouTube, you'll have music from a certain part of the world. For example, Bulgarian music, when they use their bagpipe, the gaida, it can sound very similar to Southern Iranian Neyanban music, which is the, uh, the bagpipe of, of Southern Iran. And often you'll have people remarking that, oh, this kind of music is similar to X music, you know, Bulgarian music is similar to Iranian music, or wow, Iranian music is similar to Greek music. And you always see somebody responding something like, well, they're both Indo-European. Right? The fact that they're both Indo-Europeans has nothing to do with it. I, I understand that, you know, on, on the surface level, there's some logic to it. Well, they're linked by a Indo-European connection, but I think these are very empty blanket statements that people just throw out there very quickly without really thinking about it um, in a lot of detail. Because if you're really, you know, putting this argument to the test, it falls apart in 30 seconds. The implications are enormous. The implications are that indo Euro like, first off, we now know what proto-Indo-European music is, which is extraordinary you know you tell that to any anthropologist they're going to be like really it implies that okay so that's indo-european music that these features date back to six thousand or five thousand years to the era of the proto-indo-europeans that they underwent no fundamental changes and that these are indo-european musical features that correspond exactly to the indo-european linguistic family um and it's just it's not the case because the arabs also have that music and and you know similar forms of melismatic oriental kind of music they're not indo-european speaking the turks they're not indo-european speaking it has nothing to do with indo-europeanness right there's other reasons for it the reasons basically being that you have some fundamental features that arise in ancient greek music these features are then adopted and expanded upon by the iranians the arabs the turks the byzantines develop them even further um, and you know they spread outside of, of that epicenter to other regions of the world um, that's the likely historical scenario which is much more elegant and simple than invoking some ancient lost indo-european connection but again it, it comes with that fallacy of there's an indo-european family therefore there must also be a matching indo-european musical category to come with it which is just not the case in the same way that there's no such thing as Indo-European cuisine, right? There's no such thing as Indo-European food or um, Indo-European clothing. You know, I don't want to say that there's absolutely no influence from common Indo-European roots on the modern cultures. Because you look at the story of Cúchulain, for example, in Ireland, and it's strikingly similar to the story of uh, Rostam, and, uh, Rostam, Rostam and Sohrab in Iran. Um, could it be because of an Indo-European root? Sure, possibly, but these kind of cultural similarities due to Indo-European roots, um, they're very few and far in between and they're not going to be, you're not going to have an entire block, an entire musical system untouched by 6,000 years that's going to survive through time based on that, based in that Indo-European common root. That's just not going to happen. But this is something that a lot of people expect. A lot of people expect there to be a Slavic musical family and that somehow all Slavs have fundamentally the same type of music and they don't. Poles have Central European music, Russians have, you know, Eastern European music and Serbs and Bulgarians have Balkanic music, right? There's no such thing as fundamental Slavic musical features that are universal and unique to all the Slavs, except maybe for the white voice, which is this high-pitched, screechy kind of vocal affectation that Slavic uh, female vocalists use but you know there's no such thing as Slavic modes or Slavic chords or Slavic uh, melodic progressions etc Slavic is a linguistic family and just because there's a linguistic family or a religious family or some other form of categorization does not mean 
that there exists a corresponding musical category to match it. So for example, Poles are Slavic and Serbs are also Slavic, but Polish music is more similar to German or Austrian music, who are not Slavs, than it is to Bulgarian music, who are Slavs, right? Just because there is that categorization that unites them linguistically doesn't mean that it also operates on a musicological level. Something that I want to clarify here, it's perfectly fine to use terminology such as Slavic music. I use it all the time. I name a lot of my videos Slavic music. But when we use descriptors such as these, what we have to be careful is not to confuse them for musicological descriptors. What I mean by this is, you have this piece that I uploaded called The Adventures of Marko Kralovic, and I called it Slavic music. When I call that piece Slavic music, what it means is that the cultural context surrounding it, which I purposefully drew around it, I purposefully drew a context around the adventures of Marko Kraljevic, the old Serbian and Bulgarian myths, etc. Those essentially baptize this piece of music as being Slavic. In this specific context, this specific piece, due to its cultural context, is Slavic. But when I call it Slavic music, it does not mean that the actual musical data itself is Slavic. It does not mean that the actual notes and chords are Slavic. Again, there's no such a thing as Slavic musical features, Slavic chords, Slavic notes, Slavic modes, that's not a thing. If we look at this piece of music without the broader cultural context, only at the musical data, only at the music and nothing else, we can only describe it as Balkanic music. Like that's what makes it sound the way it does. Slavicness has nothing to do with the way that this song works. Slavicness does not, you know, procure this song with its attributes. The reason it sounds the way it does is the fact that it's from the Balkans and even then a specific part of the Balkans surrounding Thrace and containing Thrace. I could have taken this piece of music and easily rebranded it as like Warriors of Thraki epic Byzantine music, right? I could have uploaded this, I could have drawn a different cultural context around it uh, for the Greeks of Thrace and it would have worked because the Greeks of Thrace have the exact same type of music as the Bulgarians of Thrace, as the Slavs of Thrace. A lot of people will believe that music will be divided neatly along the lines of a country's borders and in the moment you move into the borders of another country, suddenly the music is supposed to change. The music of Thrace is a shared cultural style of the region of Thrace throughout three countries. So Turks have Thracian music, Bulgarians have Thracian music, and Greece have, Greeks have Thracian music. And so the music of the Greeks of Thrace is more similar to the music of the Bulgarians of Thrace than it is to the music of their Greek compatriots in the Kikladas, for example. They have Nisiotika music, which is a completely different form of music. And I think these sort of questions, ugh. You know, music is something that, that connects to us on a very emotional level. I know many people who, like architecture, for example, I love architecture myself, but I've never known anybody who has ever cried at architecture. Of all the forms of human expression, music is possibly one of the ones, if not the one, that appeals to our emotions the strongest. And so when it comes to cultural music, ethnic music, one that has to do with our ethnic identity or our cultural identity, I think there's a strong desire to want it to... Um, conform to the narratives that we like to believe in. You know, I know many pan-Turkic nationalists who really want to convince themselves that Turkish music is absolutely more similar to Tuvan music from Tuva than it is to, um, to Greek and Serbian music. And I know a lot of pan-Slavic nationalists who really, really desperately want to believe that Bulgarian music is obviously far more similar to Polish and, and Slovakian music than it is to the neighboring Turkish music. So to summarize the main point of the video, when we're unfamiliar with ethnomusicology, we might expect musical provinces to be formed by factors such as common ethnolinguistic roots or common religion or arbitrary geographical classifications like Europe and Asia, you know, as if Greeks are supposed to have European music because they're in Europe, but then the moment you enter Turkey, Turks are supposed to have a completely different kind of music because they're in Asia magically because we just decided this is now Asia. None of these are factors at play. The important facts are at play in the formation of musical provinces. What has historically always been the case is physical proximity. Physical proximity, pure and simple, 
is the one factor that forms musical provinces if two cultures develop next to one another during the centuries over the centuries they will have the same kind of music more or less broadly so iranians are indo-european speaking and arabs are semitic speaking doesn't matter this plays no part the only thing that matters is they're geographically close to one another they have fundamentally the same form of music since the middle ages arabs are muslims and iranians are muslims and greeks are christian doesn't matter they are also right next to them they're close to them you know just because they're in europe supposedly doesn't mean that there's some magical border they are technically physically close to iranians and arabs and therefore they also have fundamentally the same form of music as Iranians and Arabs. Musical provinces do not answer to ethno-linguistic borders, to national borders, to religious borders. They do not correspond to any other form of categorization. They are their own categorization. Music has its own borders. Anyway, this is Fari Fergi, and if you've liked this video, please uh, like, comment, and subscribe to my TikTok, and I will buy you a ball, like this ball, that, that you can play you know, with this dog. Would you like a ball? I'll buy you a ball. Yeah, boy.